If you already have a Microsoft 365 account, or maybe you're starting a new business, you're rebranding like we are, then you can actually get a new domain directly within 365 Admin Center. This will save you a lot of time on configuring the new domain to work with your existing accounts. I'll show you how to get one and the things to avoid. My name is Bogdan Shperny, founder of Apex One Tech. All my content is free to you. All I ask is you subscribe and smash the like button. All right, so let's get right into it. Now, you go to Microsoft 365 Admin Center, right? Admin.microsoft.com. Go to Settings, and if you don't see that right away, just click Show All. So Settings, Domains, and that takes you to this page, right? And you see here right away, you can add a domain that you maybe purchase somewhere else, but we're going to go ahead and buy a domain. Now, some things to note, most of the time, Microsoft is going to take you to GoDaddy. So once we check, um, you know, it's going to tell you where you're actually purchasing from. So I recommend from the beginning, go ahead and create a GoDaddy account if you don't have one already. And all you're going to do there is just purchase the domain, okay? But I'll walk you through it. You don't want to purchase anything else from GoDaddy, none of their email, none of that kind of stuff, okay? Keep it all within M365. And just to be clear, so this domain that we're buying is just another website, right, that you can make your email, like Bogdan at domain.com. It's not going to change your SharePoint website. All right, so there's different sites you have. Now, if we just take a look at one we have here, as you see here, this company was set up under Seller Apex, a different name. Okay, so that's this URL right there will not change when you buy this domain. Okay, I have a separate video on that. Probably pop it up here on the screen that you can watch if you want to change this portion of the SharePoint website link. So it will not change that, but you can change your default domain for your emails, things like that. Okay, let's go ahead and click on buy domain. All right, so here we are actually, and it gives you an example, right? This is where your domain will appear. So we're doing one here for apex1tech.com. Okay, and we're gonna click check availability. All right, it's available. And as you can see, domain is only available through GoDaddy, all right? So we have to, they're going to connect to GoDaddy and it's going to connect the Microsoft services automatically, okay? So this is where the time savings goes in. So we do want to use this domain and it is from GoDaddy. So if you don't have a GoDaddy account, just go, you know, go to Google, type in, or, you know, to your browser, type in GoDaddy. You can also first do this actually domain search, uh, a little bit more friendly to use. So just click on this one, GoDaddy search for domain names, right? So this is, if you're not sure if yours is available, right? For example, uh, there's this crazy one I saw, apexautomation.com. You will not believe the price on it. Right, they want, someone wants $300,000 for this domain, right? So you first want to check that your domain is available. So for example, maybe let's do Apex Today Go Now. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's available. So if you see this right here, and you wanna make sure it's a .com, there's always other ones you can get, but in general, I just recommend always try to find a .com, right? Everyone's familiar with the .com. So try to find that and you'll see here, right? It costs about 12, then $22, so not expensive. All right, so just go to GoDaddy, you know, follow the prompts, you just make a new account. And again, don't buy anything from them, you're just making an account. So now back to here, back to the admin center in Microsoft 365. Let's go ahead and click use this domain. And as I say here on this next step, is going to take us to GoDaddy, we need to sign in and create an account. I found that, that if you create accounts in this step, it's actually not going to link correctly or you're going to have to link, configure the website yourself. So the best thing to do is, like I said, just make that in the beginning, make that GoDaddy account and be signed in. So let's click go to GoDaddy. Okay, so you see I'm signed in and I'm just going to click add to cart. Okay, so all of these add-ons you really don't need unless you have some kind of website that you really think someone's going to go after you. Um, and as long as you're upkeeping with your updates, renewals, everything's going to be fine. So I'm going to say no thanks for now. Okay, so you'll have your billing information you'll have to enter, uh, right, for this is your first time. And now you'll find something funny here that I always try to push you to buy the longest time period, right? That's why it's saying $88, just go to your items, you know, change this to one year. You don't need to pay them all that, uh, you know, upfront for no reason. So all, all I owe today is $12 with the tax. So let's complete the purchase. Okay, so now it's connecting us to Microsoft and it automatically jumped back 
to the admin center. So just don't click anything here, let us do its thing, and then we'll, we'll come back to it. All right, so now we both own apexonetech.com and it's connected to our Microsoft 365. These next step is exactly what you want to do. So most likely other users that you have, you want to go ahead and add an alias or maybe set this as your default, all right? So we'll click done for now though, or let me show you what that looks like in case you want to go this route. It just takes you directly to all your users. Okay, so in my case, I am actually going to go ahead and click on my own, on my own user here. And you can do this per user, but I have a couple aliases. Okay, so here you can click manage username and email in either of these places. All right, so as you see, there's a couple aliases on here and it doesn't have my new email. So if you want to just add this as another email address that you have, another alias, you know, you can just type in your user that you want to have and they're under domains, just select the new domain. All right, so here's the new one that we made, Apex One Tech. I'm going to go ahead and add it as an alias. Now, I can go down here and just for this user, I can change it to the primary primary email address, right? So the one that shows up here. But I actually want to keep this the way it is here. So I'm going to save changes. You can go back to settings domains. And now here, if you want to change this new domain to be the default for everyone, right? You'll click on it here. Okay, so here you just click on set as default and it's just giving you a warning that everyone's email addresses will change. Okay, so you could go ahead and do that and you can verify when you go back here. I'm not going to change this for this account, but you can go back right to each user just like this. Um, here, let's click on this one. Right, and you'll, and you'll see that the primary one has changed. Ideally, what should happen is that the old one should become an alias so you can still receive emails at the previous domain. But if that does not happen, again, you can add another alias here again. So just add the old email address here as the alias using your old domain that you had. And that's all, and just click save. If you learned something new, please go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe. If you have any questions, post it below in the comment section. I'll be sure to review them and answer any questions you have. Thanks for watching, take care.